Assalamu alaikum devs, welcome back to the channel, all of you Shafiri. In this video, we are going to learn about one concept called mutation testing and how to do it in Kotlin projects. Let's get started. So mutation testing is a great way to see whether your tests are good enough or not. Now, let's emphasize that the purpose of the test is to enable us to refactor safely so we can catch regression. So if the tests aren't able to catch regression, we can't rely on to do the refactoring, right? So mutation testing is a great tool to see if our tests are good enough. Even if our test suite covers 100%, like I mean 100% coverage, it doesn't mean that can catch all regression. But with mutation testing, we can check the strengths of this test suite. So let's get started and let's see how this mutation testing will enable us to check the strengths of our tests. So first, what is mutation testing and what we are going to use as a library because we are going to do that automatically. You can do that manually, of course, but we are going to use a library called pit tests in order to do that automatically. So what is as concept mutation testing? So here's the thing. Let's say you have some tests. Okay, and let's say you have some code and the test is exercising the code. So let's say that our test passes, this is the initial state, and then I come to the production code and change something that will cause the test to break, right? And when I change something like that in the production code, I expect the test to break. But here's the thing, sometimes I can change some places in the production code. Let's say, for example, I can switch the plus, for example, to a minus, or let's say I have, if something is smaller than something else, I can switch that and make it bigger. I expect the test to fail, but sometimes it doesn't. And this is exactly what the mutation test will do. It will scan your production code and figure out some mutation to do. So it will come to the plus, make it minus, for example, come to an F, revert it, for example, it can completely delete your F and see if everything goes well, and it expect the test to fail. If the test passes, it means that the mutation survived. Otherwise, it's killed, of course. If the test doesn't pass, it's killed. So this is exactly what mutation tests will do. It will try to insert many mutations in your code and expect to catch them. So in an automatic mutation testing, it will generate a lot of points in which it can tweak plus to minus, and it can do many things we are going to see an example and see if the mutation are alive or not. Okay, we are going to use something called pit test, as I told you, which is state-of-the-art mutation testing system. It provides a lot of type of mutation, which is good. You can do that manually, of course. You can go to your code, manually replace minus with plus, but this will be a tedious work. For that, we use something like that, like a library. So as I told you, mutation killed or left, like this is the concept. I will put this link in the description. Here is some examples. So here, in one, it will tell you what it did exactly. Sometimes it can make this plus, sometimes it can delete this line of code, and so on and so on and so on. And if it is red like that, it means it didn't catch it, that mutation left. So this is the concept of mutation testing. Let's see how we can do that in Kotlin. So here I'm having a project to refactor this prayer time calculator. We are going to do a mini course about it, right? It will be refactoring the legacy code. We are going to convert this Java class to Kotlin. So the first step we did in the course is, of course, to write some tests. So here you can check, if we run all the tests here, you can check that our tests recover 100% coverage after deleting some functions, but still they cover 100% coverage. But even with that, when we do the mutation testing, we are going to see some tests aren't good enough, right? And that's the purpose of the uh, mutation testing. So here the test passes, there are multiple tests, 23 tests, and all of these tests enable us to check 100% coverage so we can uh, refactor safely. But even with that, introducing mutation tests will enable us to write good tests and see whether we have test weaknesses. Okay, so we are using Kotlin in order to test Java code. So in order to set up the pit for this project, we need to include some plugin. So first we include this line in order to add the plugin of the pit test. Then after setting the plugin, we are going to configure the plugin. So first we do this configure, like this task on DSL, of course, and we are going to configure the pit plugin extension. Now we have a lot of parameters we can specify. You can always check the parameters here. There is parameters regarding the, like the configuration, of course, the target class, the target tests, of course, uh, what are the number of threads we are going to use, and a lot of other tests we are going to see some of them here. And of course, you can check the Gradle pit plugin for more details on the setup. So first we add the mutation threshold and the coverage threshold. For that, we are setting the threshold by which the test will get failed if it didn't pass or if it didn't check if 70% of the mutations are killed. The other one is for the coverage also. 
Coverage of mutation testing is also good. If you have something around 70% or 80%, it means your code or your test suite are good enough. And then we need some threads, right? We are using the available to the processor right now. And this will be huge because we are modifying a lot of points in the production code and executing the test over and over. So we need a lot of computation power. Other stuff regarding the JNet plugin, we are using JNet 4 or 5 here. That would be enough also. The mutators is the type of mutators. There are a lot of types. We are going to use generic one, which is stronger. It will include many types of the mutation. You can specify here the one you want to use, or you can exclude ones also. Depends on you. Then we are going to set the target class and the target test. We are going to do that in a minute. Let's keep it like that. And finally, other stuff like what is the output format? It will be in HTML. You can specify XML and stuff like that. And also avoid calls like here. We need to check. We are not calling something specific to the GVM internal and Kotlin. Okay. As this will avoid a lot of classes like generated classes and bytecode and stuff like that. So here we specify the target classes, which is in this package, these two. And also for the test, since I'm not having a clear package, I might use only this. And in order to run this right now, you can go here to Gradle. And here in Gradle, check for the task and check for verification. I'm going to see something called pit test. Double click on it, and then it will execute. It will start by creating mutations and do a lot of stuff, like executing for each type of mutation. It will modify the production code, execute all the tests, and repeat that a lot times. So here, as you can see, start, you can uh, enable verbose logging so you can see what is happening. So it told us created one mutation test unit test per scan. All right, send the X6 test to minion. I don't know what's about that. And for that, we need to wait until all the mutations uh, started. So mutation test completed. Here are the reports. Here are what the different mutators, right? Generated 39, 34, which is really good. Like it is 87%. Still, there is a room of improvements, but this kind of good. So here, here it's checking for the different mutators. For this mutators, 87. For another mutators, primitive return mutators and stuff like that, conditional boundary mutator, incremental void method call, and stuff like that. It tells you about everything. For example, null return val mutators, it's working every time. That's a good thing. And as you can see, it generated a lot of tests. Here is the timing. So for total timing, it's 35 seconds, which is good. And here is the line coverage. This is pretty good. The generated mutation kill, this is also good, 74. Usually, I like about 80%. And also for the test check, exactly, I love until 80%. You can check all of that. Here. You can go to build, and you can go to report, and here go to pit test, and try to open that. Here, of course, you can open it in IntelliJ. So here is the preview. Here it's telling me the test track at 78%, which is really good, the mutation coverage and the line coverage. You can check the following. You can go here, go to your class, of course, and then see what are the different mutations that happened and what didn't catch. The didn't catch means they are alive. So here, if you can see like this in red, it means we did something here. We are going to see we did one mutation only here, which is we are removing the call to this function. And then we expected the test to fail, but it passes. For that, it's highlighting this in red. So it means that this function is doing nothing. Like we are going to do that in the refactoring of the course uh, itself. We are going to delete this line because it's doing nothing. Same thing here, same thing here. When you see number one, it means it did only one mutation here. Here, we remove this one, but the test failed, and it makes sense it should fail. And here is the thing. This is evaluating all of the tests, like all of our test suite, not evaluating only one test. So it means whenever we have something wrong, it means that our test suite is missing something. Even if you have 100% coverage, it means that it is missing something. It's not exercising some path very well. We can move to something else, for example. Let's move on. Here, we did three mutations. We fixed angle. We replaced the subtraction with addition. Okay, we replaced the subtraction, which is this one, with addition. And it got survived. Like the two, two of them were killed. That's fine. But one is survived. It means we don't have tests at least, or there is something wrong with this line of code that we need to revisit, we need to review. So there is a room of improvement, and it opened the doors to check and validate what, whether this statement is true or not. And a lot of other places here, for example, for no coverage, we replace double addition with subtraction. There is no coverage at all in all the tests. And also some survive, some not. So remove conditional, replace comparison check with false. Okay, so we replace comparison check this one with false, and it didn't catch it. And there is many other places, especially this program, there's a lot of arithmetic happening, right? So it makes sense, can validate it here. So here, two things didn't pass. We changed conditional boundary, and it survived. And we also removed the conditional, completely replaced comparison check 
with false, like we did here false, and also it survived. It means in our tests, here for example, this one, in our tests, we are not exercising this well enough. So it makes sense to add an extra test case in order to fix that. And that's basically it. You are going to see multiple stuff like that. Here, there is six mutations we generated for this one. Most of them were killed only once, which is change conditional boundary, which is this one, I think. Yeah, exactly, change conditional boundary. So you can see the power of automatic mutation testing. It generates a lot of the stuff for you, and it's like noted on everything, what happened correctly or not. So this is really powerful. You can use it in your Java project, Kotlin project. And for Android project, it's a little bit different since we are not like this problem. We are not targeting the JVM in Android. We are targeting the Dalek machine, of course, the DVM. So for the moment, it's not happening correctly. I think there is some efforts and work going on for that to bring this mutation testing to Android, but I think it will take some time. But what I suggest for you is the following. You need to create a module that is Java completely module, right? So Java module or Kotlin module, pure module in which you can store the domain and the business logic. So you can use this kind of mutation testing on that specific module. And in other modules such as UI, database stuff, remote stuff and stuff like that, it's a little bit hard to do it, right? We all hope that the work of mutation testing can get to Android a little bit soon. Like there is some work going on in the, on the community, but for the moment, think about extracting and modularizing your application into its domain part, at least where the business logic lies, right? We can do this type of testing to enhance our test suite to catch all the regression whenever we do some refactoring. So that's basically it regarding mutation testing. I hope this was beneficial to you. Thank you very much for watching this video to the end. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and see you in the next videos. Salam alaikum.